Hello, welcome once more on my research blog, Discover Social Sciences. As usually, I make a general intro and then I go into the subject matter of this specific update. So, in general terms, as always, under me in this video window, you can see that uh, address of a website, discoversocialsciences.com. Uh, if you go to the description box below the video, you will find the same link. That, uh, in the description box, there is a, uh, there is a link, discoversocialsciences.com. When you click on that link, it will take you to the website of my blog under the same name, Discover Social Sciences. And there you will find a written update, which has the same title as this video. So each video on my YouTube channel is supposed to be like a short video editorial to something bigger in written form. This is how I work and this is how I couple those two forms of expression. So uh, I go into the subject matter of my today's update. So it is my research log. Uh, this presentation is dated for like yesterday. Uh, so I uh, generally I continue with the issue of collective intelligence and how uh, and on and with the question how can artificial neural networks or artificial intelligence how it can be used to simulate and to study the phenomenon of collective intelligence. So here is the first thought uh, that I start with in my, uh, in my today's update is that collective learning occurs essentially in two ways. First of all, we collectively learn by trial and error and we communicate our knowledge to each other. So that collective learning occurs by trial and error versus recombination of knowledge. And here comes the interesting part. Uh, if you think about or if you compare a collective, so a society with an individual person, in an individual person, uh, we can sort of balance those two ways of learning. So learning by trial and error uh, with the learning by recombination of knowledge that other people communicate us. This is, for example, what YouTube serves to. Now, at the level of whole collectives, of whole societies, it becomes sort of more intriguing and more interesting. And this is the question that I am uh, attempting to answer or at least to outline uh, more or less precisely in this update. How can collectives, how can societies learn by trial and error? My, uh, by the way, why those eggs in, the, in my slides? Those broken eggs are to me one of the best representations, best possible visual representations of what trial and error is. Huh? Um, so, coming back to the subject matter of my update. If we want to learn by trial and error, we need two things. First of all, we need to recognize and acknowledge error as such. So we need to acknowledge some kind of frustration with the state of reality or with the outcomes of our own actions. And then we need to propagate somehow that error forward in our actions. We need to utilize the error. It is a sort of... Uh, intuitive at the individual level, but at the collective level, it is interesting to understand how it happens. So here I assume that the recognition of error is essentially a compound phenomenon or a compound cognitive process. There are two things. First of all, when we register or when we acknowledge some kind of outcome as an error, it means that we are frustrated with an objectively measurable gap between our expectations and reality. Yet there is another layer. An error is something that uh, just frightens us. 
An error is something that makes us freak out. It is that, uh, that very fluid uh, moving frontier between chaos and order in our existence. An error is like a little bit of chaos that we haven't uh, that, that we haven't ordered yet. Huh? And here I connect we in my update to a well-known theory by Nassim Nicholas Taleb, the, the so-called Black Swan theory. You can read about it more abundantly in other readings. Here I give just a short sketch of the theory. And uh, the Black Swan theory essentially claims that we collectively tend to silence information about sudden unexpected events which, expect, uh, which escape the rules of normality, the so-called Black Swans. And yet our social structures are very significantly, maybe even predominantly shaped by those unusual events. Just a little bit of context here. Uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb is a guy who like grew out of the financial world, uh, out of risk management, out of financial strategies. And this is, uh, and his theory is essentially rooted in his studies on risk, on financial risk. Now, I have already used that approach in uh, a neural network, which I presented a few weeks ago. In the written version of this update, you can find the link. I made a network, a piece of artificial intelligence, where I sort of coded a, a disturbance, an external disturbance, an event which uh, disturbs the ordinary working of the network and which gets triggered under specific conditions. This is like a mathematical approach to what a black swan could be. Uh, now, uh, how can we recognize at the individual level, at the behavioral level that we are adapting? So how can we recognize adaptative change? So I translate it into like another take. How do collectives propagate information about errors? So here comes my like quite fresh concept. It is not yet a theory, it is rather a hypothesis. I assume that when there is any sensible modification in my behavior, so when you observe me from outside and you can see a behavioral change in me occurring over weeks or months, I change my behavior probably because I want something more. I want something that I didn't have in the past. So my so variance in my behavior, the observable variance in my behavior, can be interpreted as a compound of three components. It is the residual behavior. So by residual behavior, I understand that part of my behavior which remains more or less constant over time. Then there is adaptive change after the recognition of error. And there is an aleatory component because sometimes I do things that I don't understand myself. And finally, a few thoughts about the application of collective intelligence about, uh, in uh, management, in goals setting and planning. In management textbooks and in my management lectures, uh, you can frequently find that uh, that like staple content that we needed to set goals for ourselves and we needed to plan how to reach those goals. And it is perfectly true, I still stick to that principle yet. For example, in my own experience this year, as I have been developing an investment strategy for myself in the stock market, uh, I discovered that being relentless in experimenting with new things is very important in discovering what my goals should specifically be. So building a method of adaptive learning is just as valuable as and complementary to preparing a plan with clearly cut goals. Goals are cognitive constructs. Uh, so goals are in our head. Goals are not in reality. Uh, so goals are cognitive constructs which we make to put some order in the chaos of reality. And these constructs are valuable tools for, gu for guiding our actions, yet they need to be in some kind of functional loop with our experience. We need to be consistent and 
yet we need to be flexible. So my, my connection here to the theory of Black Swan is that generally when we set on doing something important on the long run, when we set on implementing and building a big strategy, we stumble upon those black swans, upon those unexpected events all the time. We just are not aware that they are black swans. Huh? And uh, apropos of that black swan strategy, uh, I go back, or, or black swan theory, excuse me, I, I go back for, for a moment. Uh, it is important for uh, for me. It is important to understand that those uh, so-called black swan events, so unexpected sudden events, they are just unexpected from our subjective point of view. Uh, my stance, my theoretical stance, is that reality is what it is. Mm -hmm. So when something appears as a black swan event. It simply means that our cognition of reality was somehow imperfect. Uh, but the event that we call a black swan is just as... Uh, is the same kind of component in, in reality as other events which we could predict and could understand better. Okay, that, that would be all in this update. Once again, a reminder. If you go to the description box below the video, you can find the link discoversocialsciences.com. You click on the link, it takes you to the website of my blog under the, the same general heading, Discover Social Sciences. On that website, you can find a written update which has the same title as this video. And this video is sort of a short visual editorial to the written update. So, as always, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Bye.